welcome to all of you. We're so glad that you're joining us here for another episode, an exciting episode of The Nonprofit Show. Today we have with us Gung Wong joining us from Civic Champs, and he's here to share with us what it's like to unlock grants through volunteer programs. And he's got some innovative software and backing for this. So, so stay with us. Before we jump into this conversation with him, we would like to remind all of our viewers and our listeners, every single one of you, um, who we are. So hello, Julia. Julia Patrick, she serves as the CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. And I'm Jarrett Ransom, CEO of The Raven Group, also known as The Nonprofit Nerd. So honored to be alongside Julia each and every day for these conversations. Really excited. You know, when we started this, it was a lot of uh, like, you know, a labor of love. And every single day now, if I miss an episode, I really miss the episode. So it's, um, it's you know, it's it's grown near and dear to my heart. So want to extend also uh, just huge gratitude to our amazing sponsors. Um, want to, you know, say thank you so very much to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy with National University, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, as well as Nonprofit Nerd. These companies, as I like to remind you, their mission is your mission. So they are here to help you do more good um, in, around, and throughout your community. They're awesome people and uh, really just so glad to have their support and their investment, not just here in these episodes, but truly in our community around the globe. So thank you to our amazing sponsors. And hey, if you missed any of our episodes or you want to go back and learn more about volunteer engagement and how you can make that a financial commitment for your organization, you can uh, share this conversation via Roku, YouTube, Vimeo, Fire TV, and those of you that are podcast listeners, I know I am. You can queue us up there as well, wherever you stream your podcast. So this conversation that we're about to have with Gung will be open and live in just a few couple of hours. So always same day and really excited for that. So without further ado, so excited to extend a warm welcome again to the CEO of Civic Champs, Gung Wong. Welcome. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, we are really excited. Uh, you know, again, the origin of you coming here and us knowing a little bit about you and Civic Champs, but we're going to learn a lot more, uh, really goes out to, you know, a tip of the cap to Stephen Shattuck. So thank you <laughs> so much for that. So Gung, you've got innovative software platform, you've got a vast educational knowledge and support that, you know, surrounds you as you move into the sector. Really fascinating. Would you take us a little, you know, through a little bit of your journey of how you got here and a little bit about Civic Champs? Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, I, I was a former management consultant, um, had a couple tech startups in the past that, you know, we were fortunate we were able to sell. One was a apartment search engine called Rent Jungle. Another did uh, social media management as an agency. And we, you know, had cool tech that surfaced niche content for, you know, very specific organizations um, and served some nonprofits actually within that, uh, uh, that company. And so I wanted to do something that had a bit more social impact, right? I want to do something new again, something entrepreneurial. Um, and I've always been a big fan of volunteerism, uh, both personally, but also, you know, I think even, you know, uh, we launched in 2019. And so, uh, you know, I reflected on this fact that volunteerism is one of the few ways that uh, people in our communities come together, right? And, and, and we come together in a very positive way. Right. And so everyone feels good when we go to, uh, to a habitat build. Right. And then you see the walls go up and um, you feel good when you go to the uh, the food bank or the you know community kitchen. And it doesn't matter what your background is. Right. Whether, you know, that's ethnically, whether that's by, you know, gender or by, you know, um, social economics. Right. Um, and I thought that was really powerful, just given, you know, all the things that are happening uh, today, you know, it, you know, with sort of this like polarization that we see a lot of. And so um, those are some of the sort of uh, inspirations for, for Civic Champs. And, uh, you know, we wanted to create a mobile game initially uh, <laughs> to, to, to encourage volunteers to sort of gamify like a Pokemon Go, but, but you know, for, for volunteering. Uh, but we realized that as we talked to lots of nonprofits that we could have an even bigger impact 
uh, by serving the nonprofits directly, making it easy for folks to do the day to day, right? Whether that's registrations, onboarding, you know, hour tracking. And so, for example, we use uh, uh, geofencing. Uh, yeah. So when you show up on site, it's like, hey, you know, Julie, are you here for Habitat today? And you say, yep. And that's it, right? Everything's very simple, easy. Um, and so that's what we do. I love <laughs> this. And I, I'm really impressed, even more impressed, having learned a little bit about your story before we came on live, um, that you did this in 2019. And then, wow, 2020 <laughs> happened. And the first thing that got disrupted was volunteering. Yeah. So fascinating to hear your story and, and link it through to where we are today. Really, really interesting. You know, one of the things that we've learned so much about volunteerism and, and, and how empowering it is in so many ways, and, and so many of those ways are hard to measure. But one of the things that you're going to share with us is this concept of volunteer matching grants. And let's mm. start off with what are they and how do they function? Yeah, so volunteer matching grants, they're a, a corporate program, uh, typically. And so what happens is, you know, we, I think a lot of folks know about uh, matching donation programs, which, you mm -hmm. know, maybe a, you know, Fidelity or, you know, big company says, if you donate, if one of my employees donates $25, I'll match that donation dollar for dollar, right? Um, what these companies often also have is a sort of dollars for doers program. And so they say, hey, if you volunteer at a local nonprofit, I'll also make a financial contribution on your behalf. Um, and so that's sort of the genesis of the program. Uh, I, you know, sometimes they'll do it where it's uh, dollar for dollar, right? So our, you know, one hour is, is worth $10 per hour. Other times they'll do it by event. Um, and some of them will have thresholds, right? They say, hey, if you volunteer a minimum of 20 or 40 hours, you know, I'll write a big grant, you know, of 500, 750, $1,000 for the nonprofit of your choice. So it's a really great way, I think, to get some uh, additional uh, donations for, for, for the nonprofits. Is this like for everything from like picking up trash on a Saturday morning to board service? Or, I mean, like, how does this range? I think, so most of the companies are pretty flexible. Um, so 40% of Fortune 500 uh, companies offer this. And so it's a lot of companies, um, including folks like Starbucks, Exxon. And so pretty much if you think about these large brands, and there's almost a Starbucks anywhere, uh, <laughs> but you don't think about the fact that, hey, if, if a barista comes and volunteers with you, you can get $5 per hour that they just volunteered, right? right. Um, and they just have to submit something back. Um, <laughs> But but they're pretty flexible, so it can be for board service. It could be for you know picking up the trash, like you said. Um, as long as you're five hundred one c three, typically that's the requirement. Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, they're pretty open. This is so fascinating to me. I that is a great question, Julia. I was thinking the same thing. You know, like where in the spectrum does this really reside, or could it reside? And I just I love the endorphins that being of service provide. And you mentioned this young, you know, really like, you know, if we go to a habitat build or we go to a food bank, like all of the stereotypes, all of the polarization tends to just kind of fall away, you know? And we're connected at the root and the core of altruistic humanism, I think, which is just, I don't know, it's so nice. I, I don't wanna to get too, too warm and fuzzy for all of us, but you know, <laughs> There, I love that you said there's 40%. I'd love to see that over half though, right? Like how mm. do we get that needle further? Mm -hmm. um, but definitely making a dent in this. So you started this in 19 and I, I noticed that correlation as well, Julia, right? Oh. So 19, is this for any kind of volunteering remote as well as in person, like at a community? Are there any kind of boundaries around this? No, uh, you mean in, in terms of the volunteer management grants? Yes. Yeah, no, I, I don't think so. I mean, the boundaries are uh, oftentimes if you're international, that makes it a little bit trickier. Okay. And so the okay. donations need to usually go to a U.S. based 501c3, right. um, mostly because of, you know, companies of that size, they often have uh, subsidiaries overseas. And so they'll have their own programs potentially for, for the local um, uh, chapters, if you will. 
Uh, but otherwise, yeah, there's not a lot of uh, limitations here, right? They do normally ask the nonprofit to validate uh, or, or verify that this, this work has been done. And so having a database, right, having a way to track it, that's important as well. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the, the partnership of corporate philanthropy as well as volunteering. Can you tell us like where this where this section might, you know, intersect and, and how we can best um, leverage these relationships? Sure, absolutely. So, um, I mean, I think companies, uh, you know, are always looking, you know, for, for, for multiple reasons on why they want to do corporate philanthropy or volunteering, right? I think part of it's marketing, of course, right? They, they want to, you know, be seen as, as, uh, companies that are giving back to their communities and that's great for marketing i think from a recruiting standpoint it makes a big difference especially now you see um especially with uh gen z workers that you know mission is is such a bit you know and values is such a big reason uh that they choose between different companies and then uh and then of course you know you know, when I was, you know, in corporate, you're always looking for team building events, right? And, and, and sort of like ways for people to, um, to you know, connect and have fun and and feel good, right? So that those endorphins now you associate also with, uh, with your company, which is fantastic. Um, and then the last piece is, you know, some some more, uh, let's call it forward thinking companies will see this as an opportunity to uh, develop skills for their employees, right? So especially if you're doing a skill based. Uh, volunteering, you know, maybe you're helping with marketing or websites, or you're serving on a board, right? You're building some leadership skills, um, and so I think those, that, you know, all of those reasons are are combined in terms of you know, why companies are interested. Mm-hmm. Gong, I'm curious. Can you talk to us about like some of the dollar amounts that you've seen organizations receive or be, you know, be a recipient of since since you yeah. initiated this in 2019? What are some of these dollar amounts that have made an impact? Sure. Um, yeah. So I would say, you know, the uh, the bigger ones are usually around the events, right? And so, um, and and it and it often goes beyond even their stated, uh, you know, program parameters, right? And so, oftentimes, a company will donate an even bigger check, right, for their day of service to the nonprofits of their choice. And so I've seen anywhere between, you know, $10,000, $20,000 checks, uh, you know, for, for a day of service, right, that they, they in addition to giving time that they're, you know, they're, they're providing to the nonprofits. Now, of course, some of that is 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 covering some costs right that uh, yeah. of sort of facilitating the the experience yeah. um but i would you know i think for me the 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 um the really big opportunity is not just in the dollars you're receiving directly right but think about the relationship you're building with that company as well um these are folks that might be willing to give in the future and you have companies that often have their favorite nonprofits, right? And and that starts somewhere, right? And oftentimes it's that first event, they say, hey, I had a great time. My people really loved coming here. We're going to do this every single year, right? And now you have a recurring stream. Um, the other way to think about it is, um, you know, there's this great symbiotic relationship between volunteers and, and donors, right? So most donors are volunteers. Most volunteers are also donors. They're more likely to do either, right, once they do the other. And so if you can sort of recruit, right, use this as a recruitment engine to get volunteers that have never been exposed to you, um, that's also going to drive your individual donations, right? You are speaking my love language. (laughs) I absolutely like this is often an entry point for so many people. As you look at, you know, whether it's, it's a run or race event, what I was just with an organization, we did a hike, you know, and it's, if you build a team, you know, um, and then it's, you know, you could have a team of 10, you could have a team of a thousand, depending on what that event could warrant. But this is expanding that ripple and expanding that brand, the awareness, the mission, the impact into so many corners of, you know, possibilities. So Mm -hmm. I do see the value in this. And and I I know that so many organizations, Julia, remember, you know, now almost four years ago, speaking to organizations saying, we don't know if we're going to make it through this global health pandemic. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that gung was attributed to their lack of volunteer engagement. Mm-hmm. 
So absolutely. And, and I think too, just as we are navigating out of this third year, it's really an interesting time because it's spring, the weather's changing. Yeah. People are really, I think, ready and more open to doing volunteer or group yep. events. So I feel like if, if nothing else, we have this kind of trajectory of interest, if you will, yeah. that we're missing out in the nonprofit sector if we don't look at this, you know, as an opportunity. So. And it is event season, right? You and yes. I, Julia, we've already been to several this, you know, this season and the, there's many more on our agenda. So <laughs> now is the time. And in some parts of the country, you know, the weather is amazing mm -hmm. to, to get out and, and to really, you know, engage yeah. families, new individuals. Um, so let's talk about, you know, moving into the dollars. I love that you said dollars for doers. I've heard that before. And I just again, it's just one of my favorite phrases. So how do we find and cultivate these volunteer match grants? So there's, um, we'll start with some digital tools, right? Um, if you're just getting started. So, um, you know, we, uh, I think we have a blog we published that has like a list of some, some folks um, that have these programs. Um, but beyond that, you know, uh, double the donation oftentimes has has a good list. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, you can use a service called Instrumental. Uh, they're a grant uh, search uh, software. Um, you, two weeks free, I think, to get started. <laughs> I'm a, uh, they're a good partner of ours, so I, I'm a big fan of what they do, um, <laughs> and they do, do do a good job. So uh, those are a couple resources from a digital standpoint. Um, but the other, you know, I think the other way to think about it is. Uh, almost all of your national employers and, and even your really large regional ones will have a program like this. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, like I said, you know, your Walmarts, your Sam's clubs, your, you know, your, uh, your uh, Starbucks of the world. Right. And so uh, if you look in your local community and you see, Hey, you know, here are the, a couple of the, the big brands, right? You can reach out to them. There's, uh, there's almost always somebody that's responsible for coming up and thinking about what is the fun event, you know, what is the volunteering right. thing we're going to do as a company, and if you can tee it up for them, right? That makes their job a heck of a lot easier, and they'll be more than thankful and say, "Oh, this is great. I don't have to go search around anymore. Like you're excited about us. Great. Well, we'll just, you know, we'll we'll come to you instead." Um, so I think that's a great way to, to get started. The other is um, using your board as an example. Um, a lot of board members are, 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 you know, are still working, right? And so, you know, asking them, do they have a program like this? Um, if they're in a smaller company, you know, if they're a law firm or something, they might be inspired to do something uh, similar, right? Um, and then you could even think about leveraging your board to recruit somebody, right? So you say, oh, well, I don't have anyone from, you know, the large employer around here. Maybe I go and target that as, as you know, somebody from my next board. Um, and you can mine your database, right? So whether that your your that whether that's Bloomerang and your donor database, uh, or that Civic Champs and your uh, you know volunteer database, you can see who has corporate emails, right? Right. Um, and and especially if you have a count, right, of them, uh, the ones that have high count numbers probably uh, they probably already came for a corporate event, actually, right? And so. Uh, and, and in some, some organizations, like we work with a lot of habitats do a great job of actually tracking different organizations that come out to them. Um, and, and so you can certainly look through that list too. Yeah. You know, you know Jared, I'm a big fan of the business journal. I mean, my background's publishing. So of course I would think this is a great idea, but, um, I'm a big fan of the business journal, um, publications, you know, that, that are around, I think they're in 26 marketplaces mm. yeah. in America. And they always list, they do an amazing job of capturing who's active, who's doing what by size, by revenue, by market share, all these different things. And those are ways in, in most communities to get a heck of a lot of information very quickly that's already been researched and cultivated for you just to act upon. And so that might be something for some of our viewers and listeners to look into. Um, because you're absolutely right, Gung, taking that information and going back to your board members and saying, who do you know on these lists, mm -hmm. right? You know, it could mm -hmm. be as Jarrett, we had a, uh, somebody that said 
this was kind of done and uh, one of the board members was like, well, holy smokes, that's my next door neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, how do we kind of build on this? How do we engage? You know, I love that you mentioned earlier in the conversation, Gung, about, you know, the culture of the workforce and really looking mm -hmm. at certain uh, generations and demographics of our workforce. Oftentimes having this altruistic volunteer engagement program, if you will, is sometimes the decision maker of working at the company versus not working at the company. <laughs> yeah. And could you speak to us a little bit about that? I know it's it's a little bit of a curveball question, um, unexpected, but I really feel like, you know, we had had or having currently like, you know, the quiet quitting. We, we've had a little bit of, of everything over these last, you know, yeah. several years, but I just feel like opportunities that give the employee and the employer a way to give back and to be of service is really like a big attraction right now. <laughs> I mean, I think people have a lot of options, right? Like the market is very, still very tight from a, from a labor market standpoint. Um, and, and so, you know, people want to feel proud of, of where they work and, and who they're working for. Uh, and, and, and I think, programs like this tell potential employees and your current ones that you know something about your values right yeah. um as you know obviously we we benefit a lot right as as civic chancellor you know whereas yeah. you know we're a certified benefit corporation the work we do is directly impactful we volunteer a lot um but but to give folks a sense right we have um, both paid and unpaid internships, uh, but even for our unpaid internships, um, we have a under 3% acceptance rate. Um, and so we have hundreds of applicants every semester uh, to, 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 to volunteer their time to, to, you know, to help us in, uh, you know, across different things. And the, these are folks from across the country, right? So we had someone from uh, Brown University this past semester, somebody from uh, Southern California with uh, USC, somebody obviously here in Indiana. Uh, we had, you know, so it's all across the board. So that's the opportunity though, right? Just as an example of what companies could see or, or you know, if, if you're able to, um, you know, connect with these pot uh, potential uh, uh, employees, right? In, in, in a certain way. Julia, do you remember the loaned executive? Like, I, I feel like I'm starting to hear that come back a little bit more, yeah. um, Gung. And I'm I'm curious if you're familiar with that. But it, it really would be, you know, a large corporation. It's it's almost I would equate it to like a working sabbatical, mm -hmm. to where you know they they leave their company for a period of time, temporary, uh, maybe sixty days, ninety days, and they are working with the nonprofit really in that loaned executive space. It could be a director of finance. It could be a marketing person. I'm curious if you've seen this kind of resurrecting, if you will. I don't know if I'm close enough to say what the trends are on that. We've certainly seen it. Um, you know, if you're in a bigger city, uh, I think this is definitely an opportunity, especially it's usually oftentimes for someone you want to promote that might not be quite ready for the role and they can right. do, you know, sort of learn that experience um, externally, or maybe they're a little burned out, right? And they want to keep them as a retention play. Mm -hmm. um, the other opportunity is, you know, like I said, I used to be in management consulting. And so uh, we always had pro bono projects, right? And, and there was yeah. a, uh, some sort of, you know, nonprofit of, of choice, you know, usually led by a partner of some sort, um, but we would spend uh, potentially, you know, a couple months uh, with a team, uh, right? These are, uh, you know, a half million dollars a month sort of billing rates wow. that you're donating, right, to wow. uh, to the to the organization for, you know, that's, uh, you know, technically, right? I don't know if you can actually count it, but, you know, a million and a half dollars of, 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 uh, of you know, service, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you have some of these type of organizations, um, that could also be really interesting, right, to, to sort of leverage. And they're often, again, as they're recruiting, uh, we we used to talk about that actually quite a bit to our uh, potential uh, hires to say, hey, you know, you could, we also have these pro bono projects and you really highlight them and say, hey, you know, you could you can make an impact even while you're being a consultant. Yeah, I love it. You know, it's it's been such a, a fascinating thing to have you on today, Gong, because I really believe um, you're at the forefront of a, a wonderful movement 
in our country, but also one that has amazing benefits that we don't, we might not identify, right? It's really good for corporate culture. It's really great for training. It has all of these different things at play. And I think we're going to be hearing more and more about this um, from that corporate side and, and what the value is. And I, I believe what you said right off the bat, this is a next gen issue that really is captivating retention, cultivation of candidates. Mm -hmm. And so if you're an organization that doesn't quite understand or buy into that, um, you're going to feel the pain, you know, of, of the marketplace. Really important. Uh, Gang Wang, CEO, Civic Champs. Got to check them out. It's a really interesting company, amazing website. I'm I'm all over this now that I know that you're engaged with Stephen, the amazing Stephen Shattuck, <laughs> which I did not know before we came on. Um, so yeah, really, really cool. It's been a lot of fun to hear what you have to say um, and, and kind of follow your journey along. Um, I'm putting you on the spot. Jarrett and I always love to ask this question, but where do you see yourself in the next five years? I mean, you started at the beginning of the pandemic. Where do you see Civic Champs navigating towards? Yeah, we uh, we survived. Yes. <laughs> we That's survive and thrive. That's, That's huge. That was, that was a, a, a bit of our model for uh, for a couple of years there. Um, so what you know, we you know we love to, you know, I think we we try to make it easy for people uh, to serve the communities that they care about, right? That's sort of fundamentally what we do. Um, and so the degree that we can uh, do that with more organizations, right, and and and, and make things better, right, uh, we'll do that. And so a few things, you know, we're, we're thinking about. So one is we do lots of integrations now with different, you know, different other platforms to make ourselves less, more ac accessible, if you will. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is we've been developing, uh, let's call it, very bespoke modules for very specific types of nonprofits and volunteering. So we have one, uh, we just launched for mentorship. And so mentoring is a little bit different, right? And you oh, want to yeah. capture the engagement. And so yeah. we have something there. Uh, super excited. In two months, we'll launch something for uh, food delivery or people uh, transporting. So sort of dispatching your volunteer drivers, right? They, they need a little bit of a different experience. Okay. Um, yeah. And so that's where, you know, I, I see us, you know, moving towards is, yes, we have our core platform, but then for all of these different nonprofits, really, you know, you know, ch changing our software or making little modules that are very specific to their needs, right? Well, and my crystal ball gong is telling me that we're going to have you back on. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Yeah, because I would love to go into those different verticals yeah. and, and how it impacts kind of that subsector under every industry um, mm -hmm. and, and how it's just a little bit different. As you mentioned, you know, mentoring versus delivery. And and I just think that's fascinating. So thank you for joining us. Um, Gung is very active also on LinkedIn. So please do look him up there. Uh, for those of you listening, it's G-E-N-G-W-A-N-G -G -G is Gung's name. Um, so yeah, check him out. I know we're connected and really excited to learn more. Uh, and I hope my crystal ball does not lie. It, it hasn't yet. So yeah, <laughs> would love to have you back on. Yeah, hey, absolutely. I'd love to be back. Thank you so much. For those of you that joined us, um, we're Julia and Jarrett. So really glad to... <laughs> To be here and have these conversations. Um, I, it's I'm always learning and and I've got to say also like my endorphins are high already just talking about volunteer engagement. Like just just having that conversation is really exciting to me. So I also want to say thank you to our amazing sponsors that allow us these opportunities. So shout out to our besties over at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, nonprofit thought leader, fundraising academy at National University, staffing boutique, as well as the nonprofit nerd. Uh, again, thank you to these companies. They are invested in you, invested in your mission, invested in your community, just as Civic Champs is. So Julia, I'll let you take us out, my friend. Hey, this has been great. I, I really enjoyed this conversation and I love, Gung, that you um, are understanding and, and connecting us to a more professional degree of managing volunteers because 
to your point, this is a POE, a point of entry, and we need to be understanding this more fully and using it. So um, I'm energized as well, Jarrett. I, I love that you said that because uh, this has been a fabulous conversation. Hey, everybody, as we end every episode, we want to remind ourselves, our viewers, our listeners, our guests, our co-hosts to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow, everyone.